Uh, just a little warning here to start out with because if you're installing more memory to try and get more video memory so you can play games or something like that, it's not going to work doing that. In fact, if you go to the Intel website, you'll find some interesting stuff. You know, here's how to check your memory. It'll tell you how to go out there and take a look on your system and see how much memory you have installed. So if you go down this page and everything, you'll learn a little bit more and more about it. And it has a bunch of different questions here. How is it allocated and all that. And you'll find out that unlike some of your other motherboards and everything that has a setting in the BIOS where you can change how much shared memory there is and everything, on the Lenovo, it does not. And according to Intel, it's uh, depend upon your computer manufacturer. So can you increase? Well, right there. Computer manufacturer says what you get and that's it. Uh, and again, on the Lenovo, there's nothing in the BIOS to do that. So if you're going to buy this just for that, then I wouldn't advise it. In fact, if you click on the link at the bottom or you back up a page from where you're at to this Windows page and go back to the Windows 7 memory configuration, you'll find out a surprising additional fact. It's not listed here. Is that how much will it have? Well, and the, if you look down there, the, one of the questions is, is Will it increase it? And a matter of fact, it decreases the amount of video memory available. So if you're doing this for a video upgrade to get more memory, that's not going to happen. If you're doing this to get better performance out of your applications and run better, then you should go ahead and do this. Uh, with that, uh, let's get on to the actual installation of the... Um... So what I've done here is I've opened up the keyboard. Now if you look on the side over here, it's very important that you see and realize that these are little tabs here on the side that don't stick out. I got this open by using, uh, again, very carefully, an echo blade that's very thin, and then I use another screwdriver to pry underneath the edges to get it to start to pop out, and then slowly start to pop out the back first, because if you notice in the front, it's got tabs that stick out. They can't be popped out, so you have to pop out from the back. Now here's the keyboard laying already disconnected. We're going to rotate. Make sure you rotate towards the front of the, of the system. Because there's a cable in the back, you don't want to tug on it. The ribbon cables like this are very, very difficult to reinstall unless you know what you're doing. So rotate very carefully, and there's that cable that we're talking about. So do not yank on that no matter what. So now here's the view of your memory up close and how you... There's two little tabs. If you've never done memory like this before, there's two little tabs. You just pull out on the side like that. It does a little click, and it releases the memory uh, for you to pull straight back out. Now, if you've never done memory installation before, do not touch any of that, any of the pins and everything, especially static electricity is not a, your friend in this particular case. Uh, been doing it for years, never had a memory module burn out, but they warn you, warranty and all that. So just slide in there, wiggle it back and forth, make sure you have the slot aligned, and you simply press down, and it'll snap back into place, and there it is. It's uh, locked into place. So now you're ready to replace your keyboard. Rotate it carefully again putting the front tabs in first after you've got to lay down. But before we even do that, we're going to fire it up, just let it sit there like that. Because what you don't test don't work. That's my philosophy, is basically. So instead of going through all the snapping in and all that and putting it down and everything, we're going to go ahead and go through a boot up. Now it should boot almost immediately, no problem. It should come up just like usual, you know, Windows 8, you log in and do all that kind of stuff. And I'm putting in my password now, and it should come up fine. Uh, once you're there, you can check your memory uh, simply by going to the desktop. And one of the easiest ways for people to check is right-click on your My Computer icon, say Properties, and go there, and you'll see there is your system information right there. And you'll see right there, it'll say exactly how much memory you have. And it should say uh, eight, uh, eight gigabytes, 7.88 uh, usable memory. So we've successfully updated the uh, memory on this laptop. So now what do we do? Well, we're going to go ahead and put it together. So remember, slide those tabs in the front without yanking on your cable and slide them in first and push evenly around, gently around, and get those little tabs on the sides and the back and everything to click in place. You'll seal them until it's all sealed back perfectly seamless. Uh, you should have no problem whatsoever. There's a little bump in the back, we'll press it again until we get it all clicked in place. You can go around the edges and make sure that it uh, is seated fine. So, and again, uh, just after you're all done and everything, the next thing you're going to do is boot it up again and see how it works and everything. And in this case, again, uh, nothing that we did putting it back in place has caused any problem. We're booting up. We're, we're good to go. So now we have the additional memory on our system and we're off and running, playing, doing whatever we need to do on our laptop.